Hi, I'm Linda Shore, Executive Director of the Astronomical Society of the Pacific. And you might notice what I have in my hand is a white piece of cardboard. It may look really boring to you, just a white piece of paper, but actually what's on this board is the image of everything in this room. Images of the books in the library, images of the cameraman, of the camera, of the lights. It's covering this white piece of paper. That's a pretty extraordinary claim. So I'm going to use a very simple optical system to show you how this works. This is a hole in a piece of paper called a pinhole. And every optical system has a hole. Your eyes have a hole. It's called the pupil. Your cameras have a hole. It's called the aperture. The camera in front of me has a hole in it. And the Galileo scope has a hole in it. There's the hole where you're going to put your eye, but I'm talking about this hole, the hole where the light enters. Notice it's much bigger than the hole in that little piece of paper. It's a big hole, but it's really important. And it's probably one of the most important parts of the optical system of any telescope, including the Galileo scope. So let's do a little experiment. Let's take a look at the pinhole, the small hole, because I want to show how that one little hole isolates one or two images of all the images in the room and allows us to see it on that big piece of cardboard I showed you. Because that's a way to show you how important a hole is to an optical system. Here we have the same white cardboard we had before. It looks white right now because we have a white light shining on it. And as I said, images of everything in the room are on this white piece of paper right now. But to make life easier for us, we're going to illuminate this white piece of paper with these two bulbs, a red CFL and a blue CFL. And if you want to try this at home, it's very simple. You just get a surge protector, and you get these special sockets that have plugs at the end, and you're ready to go. So let's turn off the lights, and I'll turn these on. So if you look at the cardboard now, you might notice a pink glow. I'm going to make the claim that what you really are seeing are billions and billions and billions of images of a red light and a blue light. So let's bring up our optical device, the pinhole. If I bring the pinhole up and you look at the screen, what do you see? You can see the two light bulbs, a red one and a blue one. So the hole is letting through just a few images. And those few images are being projected onto the board. You might notice something else. While the red light is on the left side of your screen, the red image is on the right side. And the blue light is also reversed. So our image is right left reversed. It's also upside down. If I pick the light up, the image goes down. And if I drop the light down, the image goes up. So our optical device has done a very interesting thing. It's both flipped the image right left and up down. Now what will happen if instead of one hole, I use two holes? Here are two pinholes punched in the paper. Take a look at what we get now. Now we're getting two images of this pair of light bulbs. You're seeing two red lights and two blue lights. And they're also right left reversed and flipped upside down. So two holes gives you two images. Want to guess what happens when we use three holes? All right, let's take a look. With three holes, you got it three images of that single pair. So we have a pair of light bulbs, but now we have three images, all right, left, reversed, all upside down. Well, we could keep doing this, I suppose, four, five, six, seven. So I punched a whole bunch of holes in a piece of paper. You could count them if you want, but if you look at the image on the screen, lo and behold, we have lots and lots and lots of pairs of images of two light bulbs, a red one and a blue one, all right, left, reversed, all upside down. Lights go up, 
they go down, lights go down, they go up. So let's take a look at just one big hole, this one. This is a big giant pinhole, but now I think you understand that it's lots and lots and lots of holes all added up together in one place. Look at that, the image is still right, left, reversed. The blue is on the left, the red is on the right. You have a very bright image, but let's face it, it's also really, really fuzzy. It's bright because you have lots and lots of pinhole images added up together, and it's fuzzy because you have lots and lots of pinhole images added together, all of them slightly shifted from one another. So there's the conundrum. If I want a bright image, I use a big hole, but it's fuzzy. So how can we fix that? So what have we learned about this hole, the pinhole, this wonderful little optical system? Well, we learned that as light strikes a piece of paper, a screen, this hole can isolate just a few of the images coming onto that screen so you can see it. But we also learned something of a conundrum. The larger the hole gets, the brighter the image, but the fuzzier the image. And the smaller the hole gets, the sharper the image becomes, but it also gets very dim. Well, what an astronomer would like is an image that's both sharp and bright. And that's where lenses come in. In the video on lenses, you'll find out how a pinhole or a large hole and a lens can work in conjunction to give astronomers a really wonderful image of the night sky in their telescopes. Thank you.